This is Kalima Pryforce, and I'm from Brooklyn, New York, and, uh, and I just moved out here about four months ago. So my idea, my idea starts with Tim Russert from uh, Meet the Press. A couple of days before he passed away, I think it was the, um, the Montana primary, it was the, one of the primaries that President Obama won, uh, and, and he was just really excited. He was exhausted, he was excited, and, uh, and he, he was on MSNBC, and he said, wow, I'm so ins inspired, I want to go into an urban school classroom and talk to the kids yeah, about journalism and, uh, and, and how much he loves journalism. And so uh, my idea is, uh, is career stories, and that is web-based career matchmaking for kids. And so if career stories existed at that time, I would have given Tim a call, and I said, hey, Tim, rather than talking to a group of uh, 50 or so students, or you know, if once they find out that Tim's come to the school, they probably would smash in like 200 students into that one classroom. Why not uh, a young person come to the set of Meet the Press and put you in a hot seat? Uh, about the things that you love to do and what, what got you into journalism. And we will record it and we place it on the website. So now the reach is instead of 50 or 200 students uh, matched into one classroom, it's, you know, it's, it's hundreds of thousands of young people. And so that's what Careers does. Careers uh, is a concept that I, that I formed about two years ago um, because, of, because in, in an ideal world, every kid gets a roadmap based on your dreams. But they don't, and so and so and so. My idea is, well, how can you create some sort of uh, a website of seamless integrated web tools, web tools that uh, that use existing technologies, uh, where professionals are able to share the how-tos of their success uh, with young people, 12 to 21. So essentially, uh, 12 to 21 year olds will get a running start in finding their personal mission using the web. And why is this important? Because young people are becoming increasingly aware of their digital presence. Uh, I think Mashable came out with the article that 92% of US toddlers already have some sort of digital presence. <laughs> and so, <laughs> and so, and so my, my, my potential kids, you know, your kids, um, you know, they're going to be a little bit more, they're real more aware. And so um, they want to know uh, what's being Googled, um, what, you know, what, what will you find, and they want you to find what they want you to find. And so, um, and so, and so, so, you, so that grandmother wants to be able to say, "Oh, you know, my darling, she's the, the best dancer and slash singer slash piano player this side of the Biloxi, and you should go to this website to see her." And so far, that doesn't exist. And so, Carissa satisfies a couple of points, pain points. One is um, that it's a video catalog, so it becomes this largest data bank of storytelling of professionals for about three, four minutes sharing their story with, uh, 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 with these kids. So it's designed in a way that is attractive to kids. So we're not talking about, uh, you know, in a, in a big think sort of way of, you know, someone saying, well, you know, this is what I do, this is how it goes. You know, we're talking about the, the format that, that, that MTV and VH1 and a lot of those other uh, uh, production companies have already mastered. You know, you have an independent artist um, a song in the background, and you know, so it's, it's sort of like yeah, MTV Cribs. You know, like yo, this is how, this is what I'm doing. You know, so it's, you know, rather than this is this is uh, this is where I'm living. And uh, but you do it, you, ma you make it exciting. You, and you and for three, four minutes, because that's about as much time as as you have with them. Uh, you you, you, they, you uh, a story is being told. And we're talking about uh, professions that run uh, run the gamut. Um, another pain point is that not all young people know what they want to do. Not all young people know, know that they want to be a physician. Um, they like to dissect animals, but they don't know that they want to be a physician. Um, and, so, and so what do you do? And so, uh, so, I, so I've been working on a way to create um, a system that is sort of an algorithm that, that semantically matches keywords, interests, uh, with, career, uh, with, with career professions, possibilities. And so, and so, uh, you know, many of us have our Facebook profiles, and Facebook has, you know, lists our, our our interests. And what do they do with that? Really, you know, they create a page, or you know, they target ads, or whatever, whatever. So, so if a young person is able to, let's say, populate their data from existing social networks, and and those interests are are are, are accumulated, and then uh, 
and then and then that's where the matchmaking begins. That's where they say, well, you know, you you watch a lot of CSI, and um, you know, you watch a lot of CSI, which is kind of bleak, you know, you know, you know being twelve, um, and you uh, and you and you read a lot of detective novels. So have you thought about being a, a private investigator? Or have you thought about joining FBI or you know that sort of thing? And so that's what it does. And another pain point is is uh, that digital presence and and the ability for young people to have some sort of digital portfolio online. And educators have been talking about digital portfolios since the, you know, since the, the web was able to uh, into the classroom. But no one's done it right. And so, and, I, and so I'm hoping to do it right. And that is because of that, that theme of careers. And so, uh, and so what the digital portfolio would mean is that the young person says, OK, well, this is what I'm interested in. And, uh, and then they're able to create a, a portfolio once again, the existing technology exists. So those galleries that they have on Facebook then becomes um, uh, galleries of their work, some of the things that they're working on. Um, uh, using uh, software like SoundCloud, they're able to record uh, a demo of their song or, or, or some code that they're able to write up and, and publish. Um, and, or, you know, like whatever their work is, is, uh, is collected through this digital portfolio. And then, yeah, so that's the, those are the three point pain points for for Caristas. So I would start with the videos. I think it's a good idea. I think you get a couple like gener like general age groups, like a high school kid or like a middle school kid, I'm not a school kid, have them start interviewing. I think plenty of professional people will gladly be interviewed by kids in that situation. You start video recording them, you put them online. Um, I think you got a bit of a distribution problem, which is how you get the word out a little bit, but you know some families, it'll spread through school systems probably. So plenty of kids I think have a tremendous curiosity about, you know, what I showed you when I grew up basically. And that having a kid interview that, but I, I would get a couple different age groups to do it sort of thing to kind of spread that gap. I'd probably focus on that rather than going like to everything at once, like the portfolio and all that stuff all at the same time. Because once you just once you get the content and you get the audience coming in, then you can do more stuff with it. So like get the audience first. I, I agree. Ted, and, yeah, yeah, you had me at Ted for kids. Yeah, yeah. that's yeah. exactly. Like, I was thinking this is very Ted for, for like kids. There, there's yeah. actually there's a website I don't remember the name of it, but the basic premise behind it was that you could observe the career path that other sort of professional people had taken. It was almost like showing you their you know, curriculum vitae from back before they were who they are now. Again, I don't remember the name of it. I don't even know if it's still around or how it did, but um, the first part of what you were talking about, I was kind of thinking about that part of it. Um, again, you could probably, you try Googling and see if you could find it, but it, this is like maybe three years ago this was out there. Um, I'd take a look at that. Yeah, another analogy you might want to look at, Ted for Kids is, is kind of nice because, you know, it's great, it's got this great production value, and it's these you know, high-class speakers, but I think something closer to what you're looking for might be Mixergy. If you look it up, it's just purely, it's a one-man army uh, that I think he was involved with Meetup or something, and now he turns his time towards uh, recording video interviews with, he wants to inspire entrepreneurs. He wants more small companies, so he goes and looks for those people and interviews everyone he can find. And you start with small you know, smaller people, and now he's working all the way up to like the Paul Grahams and everything else, and you would probably do the same. And it's, it's something, if you look at your three ideas uh, and look at everything you could possibly do, uh, trimming that down to what is the absolute least minimum thing I can do and the thing that's most different, I completely agree with the videos. I haven't seen anything like that out there. I agree with the pain point. I, I went to an urban inner city uh, high school and junior high too. I, I understand the problems of coming out of that situation and how role models can help. And I think the videos would be the most bang for your buck. Everything else is something that you could use to set up a Ning network. It doesn't matter. Like that's all plumbing. I like the video to, too. Yeah. Are to kids the interested in going to a site like this? Or are they going to be forced to in school? Or are they going to choose to instead of play a video game or Farmville? They're going to say, "Hey, I'm curious what I want to do for when I grow up." Pizza, Mario, and Brick. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We did. Yeah. Our, ENFP. Um, our our customer development strategy has been sort of. Because um, when I when I thought of careers, I was in the shower and at, and, and, and it was just it, literally it was just it was it was this uh, tagline that hit me career day every day 
As soon as I got that, I went out to shower and I called up the, all the my The best friends. ideas come when you're standing oh, there. Oh, yeah. It always happens that way. <laughs> <laughs> and I called up all my friends who are uh, uh, students at, at, uh, at the Teachers College at Columbia. And I, tell you, and I spoke to them and I said, okay, now I want to speak to your kids to find out. What, and, and I bounced around a couple of names. The kids loved careersters. And so, um, and, and, this is what they're, and this is what they're saying. They're, they're saying that it depends on how, on how it's being delivered to them. So, uh, so a firefighter. Oh, well, I'll, I'll finish the thought. Finish so, that thought, but that sure. is actually. Tough. So a firefighter uh, who describes, um, who's, who's talking about you know their job, you know, it's kind of it's boring to kids. Uh, but a fight, but if you get uh, a child that feeling of actually being, you know, on a fire truck and they're racing towards a fire, and then that firefighter while he's there is describing, he's saying, hey, you know, this is what we do. I have this. I have this instinct where I want run towards fires, where everyone else is running away from fires, and I lost friends during 9/11. But this is what we do. This is what we're all about. So if you're if you're if you're if you find yourself running into fires, you know, then maybe this is something that you want to do. And so if you make the, the content exciting enough, and then, and that's and you and it start and it start start there. The content creation as a video catalog as a minimal viable product, um, then the kids will love it, especially if Justin Bieber gets on. Oh, I like it. Yeah. Awesome. Nice. Thank you.